also who have driven this process, our development partners, your excellencies, and submissions and diplomatic co-present, the president of the Law Society, and very, very distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. On behalf of the NCAJ, I take this opportunity to thank Your Excellency for accepting our invitation to grace this occasion of the launch of the first Administration of Justice Annual Report period covering 2021-2022, which we have presented pursuant to provisions of Section 37 of the Judicial Service Act 2011. As justice sector institutions, we value this support and collaboration. Like every speaker has emphasized, Your Excellency, none of us would succeed unless we worked together. And just to arrive the fears about our independence, which we guard most jealously, we confirm in all our meetings we never discuss the merit of any matter. We only discuss the administration of justice. Are we delivering justice to our people? That is the question we ask ourselves all the time. I welcome all ends of NCJ agencies, ends of other arms of government, our development partners, CSOs, and indeed all of you to this launch. Your Excellency, I also wish to offer apologies from the IG. Your government is very busy and very hands on. On its way to this meeting, he was called because of a serious security breach. And I think he changed tacts because he had to answer to you why those security lapses are happening. So he abandoned this meeting. Uh, apologies from your IG, your Excellency. The report we are launching, as we have seen from the small snapshot, presents an account of the programs and activities of the NCJ and all the other agencies. This report identifies the challenges that we have encountered as uh, agencies delivering justice to our people, especially the poor, the marginalized, and children and women. And I'm happy to welcome the new advisor to your office on women and women women's rights. We will never let her go because the issues of women and their women's rights are many. We were recently launching the Specialized Court User Committee on Sexual Gender-Based Violence. So our trail will be full and she will be a member of the NCAJ because we have a Specialized Committee that is dealing with those issues of SGBB. The report also recognizes the opportunities and makes re recommendations for ensuring access to justice for all the people of Kenya. In implementing our programs at the NCAJ, we are guided by the strategic plan that we have been following, which has its underpinnings in Kenya's Development Blueprint Vision 2030 and our international obligations under the Sustainable Development Goals. And of course, we have looked at Your Excellency's policy on the bottom up, and this is what we are calling access to justice for the marginalized, the poor, and the underprivileged. The success achieved in the period is attributable to the collaborative and consultative approach adopted by actors within the justice sector, which has contributed to the more efficient and effective delivery of justice. This, Your Excellency, being our inaugural report, 
we have tried to retell our story of the rationale and the genesis of the NCAJ and how it emerged from the appreciation at the local court level that stakeholder engagement and participation were key to addressing and responding to challenges in the delivery of justice. In the Constitution, the participation of people is central. And the justice that we are supposed to deliver is supposed to be people-centered. We are supposed to ask people, are we serving you? Are we delivering justice? This organic growth has been entrenched in statute following the recommendation of the task force on the judicial reforms that was made in 2010. Since its inception in 2011, the NCAJ has provided a platform for all the actors in the justice sector to design responses to the challenges within the justice sector. This has seen a florification of policies, guidelines, manuals uh, developed by the various sectors. In addition, under the umbrella of the NCAJ actors, we formulated a response to the COVID-19 global pandemic that ensured the wheels of justice continued to turn in the wake of this debilitating and we devised containment measures that were adopted to store the spread of the virus in the country. During the reporting period, the NCAJ launched and we are implementing our strategic plan whose vision is a coordinated and cohesive justice sector serving all the people of Kenya. I thank the Council for remaining completely focused on ensuring that we strengthen our governance structures at all levels. In line with our commitment to shared leadership, the Council resolved to have the position of the vice, person, the vice chairperson, and we erected unanimously Mr. Nudin Aji to that position. And he has hit the ground running and carried a lot of activities in this position as the vice chair. That is what we call shared leadership and shared responsibility. We have also created subcommittees at the council level and formalized departments at the Secretariat. It was during this reporting period that the Judicial Service Commission recruited Dr. Maraga as the Executive Director of the NCAJ Secretariat. The NCAJ Council remains focused on deepening criminal justice reforms. In May 2022, as you have seen Your Excellency on the small clip, we successfully convened the Second National Conference on Criminal Justice Reforms, dubbed to once a rights-based criminal justice sector. One of the biggest challenges we have in our justice sector today is implementing criminal law that was enacted during the colonial period. Uh, therefore, during this conference, participants delved on topics uh, such as leveraging technology to enhance access to justice, ensuring that we safeguard human rights in the administration of justice, that we enhance access to justice for the vulnerable groups, and tackling corruption in the justice sector and in our country at large. I will therefore encourage all of us to read the report and the details on its recommendations. Your Excellency data corrected on the number of files processed by the different actors in the criminal justice chain make a strong case for the recommendations we are making for alternatives to prosecution and alternatives to custodial sentences. During this period, the NCAJ Council also focused on civil justice reforms and we felt we needed to launch 
a specialized court user committee for commercial courts, environment and land courts, and recently uh, SGBB. At the Council, we established a working committee on civil justice reforms and a department for civil justice reforms at the Secretariat level. Owing to the concerted efforts of the agencies, the period witnessed an increase in the number of matters reform, uh, resolved through NDR. We have also been asked as the judiciary by the Council to expedite the, criminal, the commercial justice uh, cases that are pending at the commercial division and we have agreed as the judiciary to set uh, time assigned in the month of February to do an RRI or a rapid results initiative on tax matters. At the heart of the NCJ rise the court user committees, uh, which is the novel approach increasingly recognized at the regional and international level as a best practice in the administration of justice have been called to share our experiences outside of Kenya on how we run the court users committees. In 2021, we hosted a benchmarking delegation led by the Chief Justice of Mozambique, uh, who came here to run and draw from our experiences on how to set up and manage a court user committee. During the reporting period, NCJ expanded the numbers of CUCs by 26%. Uh, we are now operating at 236. We have now specialized court users committees for children. Uh, Your Excellency, the whole of November, we were looking at the welfare of our children. And one of the clarion calls at that meeting, which I attended the symposium to attend uh, the service week, was let every Kenyan ask Aliam Toto. Every morning let us ask, how are our children? And I was happy, Your Excellency, the other night when I watched you on TV, reminding parents to take the responsibility of finding out how their children's day in school was. Did they have homework? And if they have homework, how can the parent help? This is a conversation we need to continue having so that we can rescue our children uh, who are being disconnected from the society and being termed delinquent. They are being termed delinquent because of a failure of a system. Uh, we are supposed to take care of our children. We've also set aside environment and land CUC and command as you called CUC. At the grassroots level, CUCs are instrumental in unlocking barriers to the administration of justice. I am based here in Nairobi with the Deputy Chief Justice. We are not in every court. So we've been calling upon our ends of stations, our presiding judges in the region to take charge of the leadership of the CUCs together with the DPP and the NG office, they run very vibrant uh, CUCs with other agencies. These, most of them have devised very effective case clearance innovations, enhancing the overall performance of our justice system. It is helped to recognize a few of these pace setters, such as Capsavet Law Court CUC, Viga Court, CUC, Viwa, CUC. If their representatives are present, I would actually invite them to stand because they have been very, very innovative uh, so that Your Excellency can recognize these are our champions for how we can join hands together and work together for the benefit of our people. Thank you very much and please be seated. The efforts of the NCAJ Standing Committee on the Administration of Justice in Children Matters bore fruit with the enactment of the Children Act 2022. 
implementing the Act, Your Excellency will contribute greatly to protecting children's rights. Working with the judiciary, the committee has now institutionalized in November as the Child Justice Service Month. This intervention has contributed to increased awareness of child rights and needs within the justice sector and accelerated the disposal of matters, as well as raising awareness within the society who is a child and what is the requirement, what is parental responsibility, what is community responsibility over a child. The NCAJ, in acknowledging the unique vulnerabilities of survivors of victims of SGBB, revamped our working committee on sexual and gender-based violence and developed standard operating guidelines on sexual and gender-based violence. We also recently launched the National Specialized CUC for SGBB courts to consolidate our efforts to ensure that these cases that the country decided the offense of sexual violence is unacceptable, are uh, hand and determined in the most efficient manner. While we were launching this court, our attention was drawn, Your Excellency, to harmful practices that are taking place in some corners of this country where girls, young girls are being prepared for FGM and Your Excellency will be inviting you to take up, to be one of our champions, to say in the year 2022, in this century, we cannot have little girls being removed from school to be subjected to FGM, to be subjected to hard marriages, little girls to be doing exams from the maternity wing. We have to say no to sexual and gender-based violence. We must protect our society. We must protect our children because at the end of the day, they become a burden to the government. The government will have to look after the mother who is a child and the child who is born. So we have to protect ourselves. And then CJ recognizes that we have a role to play in that because our members of the court users committees are present in those sites, in those locations. And therefore, the question we'll be asking within ourselves is who is sleeping on their job? Because there is a, a county commissioner, there is a chief, there is a OCS, there is a OCPD, there is a court within the region. Why are these activities going on? That is a big question we'll be asking ourselves when we meet in our own assembly, Your Excellency. So NCAJ recognizes that uh, we have to fully harness technology and the potential it brings in accessing justice. Accordingly, we have established a working committee to facilitate the rollout of the ICT focused on collaboration. We are working on building seamless interoperability of ICT systems among justice sector agencies. To support this, we intend to scale up investment in ICT across the justice sector so that all agencies can be at the same level. Given our strong belief and also which we share with Your Excellency on the effectiveness of ICT as an enabler or sort of justice, we hope that the National Treasury can ring fence budgetary allocation specifically targeted to ICT for justice sector agencies to ensure undisrupted delivery of justice. The report also identifies challenges that have continued to plague the sector. These are limited resources, human and financial uh, capacities, in addition, we observe that there have been instances of overlapping mandates between the institutions that have played out negatively in public. In the next financial year, Your Excellency, the NCJ will prioritize the finalization of the draft bill, uh, the development of the ICT policy. We 
also hope to strengthen and institutionalize the CUC uh, reforms focused on the vulnerable groups, broadening our network of collaborations, both state and non-state actors, and formulating coordinated responses to corruption. We will look at the National Treasury and our development partners for continued support. And as I conclude, Your Excellency, I would like to recognize the work and commitment of the NCJ Secretariat, the working committees, and our CSO partners, and the contribution they have made to the success of NCJ, which we have captured in the report. The Council that I chair remains absolutely committed to supporting the work of the Secretariat and working committees of the NCEJ and strengthening the partnerships that we have enjoyed from our development partners. Finally, please join me in celebrating the team that has worked tirelessly many of the programs covered in the year under review. Once again, Your Excellency, I thank you for making time to come and encourage us because we are all about interagency, interdependence, collaboration and cooperation because at the end of the day we serve one Kenyan the one Kenyans have named Wanjiku so God bless you and God bless Kenya and now it is my very very singular honor and privilege to invite your excellency